Did you dare watch yourself back yet from last week? Oh God, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> This is Trainer Talk, the podcast, brought to you by Sharon Gaskin of the Trainers Training Company and me, Jeanette Tessier of the Get Back Gang. In our weekly show, we cover news and views from our businesses, along with a top of mind topic. Of course, it wouldn't be Trainer Talk, the podcast, without the Dog Walking Digest. And every now and again, we invite a guest along to share their experience and expertise. After 90 episodes of just audio, we're now on YouTube as well. So feel free to catch up there. Just search for the Trainers Training Company or the Get That Gang, or download us on audio only through your favourite podcast streamer. So why not sit back with a cuppa, make that journey or chore go a little bit quicker with our weekly inspiration for developing your training business. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Trainer Talk, the podcast. We are at episode number 92. So here we are again, Sharon. The world didn't explode after we put our faces on YouTube last week, so that's all right. How are you doing? I am very good, thank you, this morning. I'm mm-hmm. basking in the... Uh... In the in the wintry um, in the winter wonderland that is Swansea. <laughs> uh, so yes, I don't think we get away with not talking about the snow that most of the country uh, enjoyed well, over the weekend, eh? Yeah, well, it's really quite bizarre because you know when we moved here, we were told, um, you know, in in no in in very very certain terms that uh, it never snows in Swansea with it being by the sea and everything. And uh, so that was what we expected. So, you know, and uh, yet another thing that has been totally wrong uh, since we moved here, I woke up yesterday and, you know, we are it, it's snowing basically. <laughs> oh, it did snow yesterday. Um, you know, quite, quite, quite thick as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's all turned to white. It's very, very icy here. It looks very, very pretty at the moment. And, um, as I said to you uh, just now, when I look out of my window, my back window in the kitchen um, with all the hills, it looks like it looks like I'm in Switzerland. <laughs> 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 the Swiss start... Alps from my kitchen uh-huh. window, don't you, you, you know? Singing about lonely goat herds and that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, I was saying just when we were having our little sort of prelim chat, uh, I was saying that... Um, uh, it is it's not unheard of but it is quite rare to to get snow in Bournemouth although I have seen uh, snow on a sandy beach which is a really weird sight um, but as per uh, pretty much every weekend at the moment because it's my support bubble I'm up at mum and John's uh, yeah. and they only live probably ooh, 20 miles north of here so you know it's not very far away maybe less than that actually about 17 miles yeah um and the difference between here and there is usually about two or three degrees uh, yeah. difference in temperature which most of the time you don't really notice that much um but certainly you know the difference obviously between it snowing and not snowing so yeah we woke up yesterday morning and of course it was snow up at theirs and and it was a yeah. glorious walk i mean it was forecast to be sleeting for the rest of the day yeah which it did yeah, yeah, yeah. um so lovely lovely walk with the dogs and and scamp absolutely adores the snow which is great he was eating it on the way around which is a, <laughs> a new behavior tastes nice <laughs> yes quite <laughs> Don't eat the yellow snow. No, that's a different. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so yeah, so that was a lovely, lovely walk. But I was keeping an eye on the temperature for coming back last night because if it, if it dropped too low and the roads had kind of defrosted a bit and then iced up again, it could have been quite treacherous because they do, yeah. do live up a bit of a hill. And I know you live on a hill, don't you? Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, people were worrying about that. Yeah. So, uh, but luckily it kind of came to nothing. And I mean, I, there's nothing down here, but I would imagine for for them it's virtually gone. Uh, now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Very fleeting. Yeah. Uh- no, very, very, very wintry, very nice. It's lovely. Well, on a day like today, when it's lovely and nice and sunny, and you can just, just look at it without having to go anywhere, you know. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Which is just really, really nice. We, we um, were saying yeah. that, yeah. We were saying, you know, uh, we want it to, we want to wake up to the snow, have a nice walk in the snow, and then we want it to go away again, hmm. and that's enough. Thank exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were you up to last week? Then this last uh, week. Do you know what? It's one of those where it's kind of, what did I do last week? It's, the weeks are seeming to go very, very quickly. But one thing I did do, 
uh, last week, um, uh, as, as well as hosting the rabble at one o'clock on, uh, on Friday. Well, indeed. Evening. Thank you so much for that. Hey, and I will no explain worries. why I wasn't there in a, me- in a moment. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Um, but last week was just sort of ploughing through various to-do lists and getting things up and running and, and sorting out some stuff um, uh, for where I want the business to go. Uh, this year yeah. um, so a lot of behind the scenes stuff um, and also getting on with things that needed to be got on with frankly um, so uh, uh, lots of stuff still going on behind the scenes for, for your website and, and all those bits and pieces and various other ones that I'm working on as yeah. well and, uh, and a few other a few other things besides but uh, uh, what I've done now is is finally uh, launch the new Facebook group for the Get That Gang Mm-hmm. Uh, which is uh, where I'll be sort of concentrating my Facebook efforts outside of training yeah. talk, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, so trying to record some videos for doing that and, and having Facebook going, yeah, record, record, record. No, no, you can't record, no. <laughs> computer like says it. no. Uh-huh. <laughs> completely. And that was, that was a bit frustrating uh, at one point, for sure. Um, for sure. But it was nice to uh, end, the, end the week, albeit with the rabble, um, with wine o'clock. Yeah. Uh, so for anybody listening that uh, isn't part of the Train to Talk community and hasn't heard us talking about this before... Uh, wine o'clock is something that you instigated during the first lockdown wasn't it yeah. Um, yeah which was sort of a just five o'clock on a friday evening we all gather on a zoom and just you know chew the fat um drink yeah. alcohol uh for, for, <laughs> the, for those that want to yes exactly beverage of choice uh so i was on tea uh, on friday but lots of people you know they just have a glass yeah. of wine wind down yeah. and, and just catch up with each other and yeah. it was really lovely because we had one uh well two really technically speaking of our newer members uh, came along so we had andy and ben uh, nice. in there um and of course that thus ensued lots of jokes about oh no we're going to put you off now ha 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 yeah. you know, <laughs> kind of uh, but it was great they they stayed the course so it was fabulous it was uh, it was really good fun really good fun yeah oh so, good, yeah. good 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 nice nice how, nice. how nice. was your week well my week was uh, a bit like you know just was very very busy because mm-hmm. it's just like loads going on at the moment so i am really conscious of the fact right now that we are re- recording um and the sun is like in my eyes it <laughs> so is, it's like, it? yeah. i'm like okay who cares <laughs> <laughs> we'll just plow on we'll plow on but um yeah so it's been really really busy and lots lots going on in in, in trainer talk and complete trainer and different mentoring clients that I've got so but on Wednesday I actually had a no unexpectedly a no zoom day which was actually really really nice yeah. um because I've not had a no zoom day for a while because mm-hmm. if you remember I'd kind of instituted these freedom Fridays which I said um a few months ago right on a Friday I'm not going to do um any zooms so I'm going to have at least one day a week where I don't have to pitch up and, and speak to anybody on zoom but you know all that has gone out the window <laughs> already of due to the volume of of, of uh, sort of work and, and things i'm involved in at the moment so um so it was quite nice to have a no zoom day on wednesday yeah. in the knowledge that um uh, it's probably going to be the last one that i have for a while so uh yeah That's that, true, was, that was nice did yeah. you i mean did you did you have any inkling beforehand or did you just sort of t- rock up to your diary in the morning and go oh oh that's nice no well somebody uh one of my mentoring clients wanted to change it to, to next week ah, and okay. that was the the only thing that i did have in the diary that day a uh, zoom wise so it was like really nice it was like oh, oh yeah lovely. Great. Proper bit, unexpected. You know. oh that's nice yeah. when that happens yeah yeah because when, when yeah. you when you uh know it's coming along i mean it's still great uh but when yeah. you know it's coming along there is a i don't know if you're like me there's a tendency to go oh good i'll get that done that and on that and then all of a sudden i have a massively long to-do list for this one free day so to speak that i've got but when it happens unexpectedly I think it's there's almost an, an additional joy uh, in it, yeah. isn't there? Oh yeah, there was there was definitely definitely an additional joy <laughs> about it. Just uh, just not having Brilliant. to pitch up and look at yourself I and mean, in the flipping camera. I find that <laughs> at the, I was talking to somebody about this last week, and she was sort of saying the same. It's that it's it's not so much the the talking to other people, which is is for me. You know, that's where I get my energy from, and I love it, and it's great, and all the rest of it. But it's this constant having to see yourself in on the screen all the time. It's just ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's just all like, like no, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, why do I have to, you know? <laughs> I don't know. You see, I, know. We're, I mean, it's not as if we're even when we weren't recording this, knowing that the video was going out, um, we would still have the Zoom chat and be able to to see each other. So it's not like you haven't had enough practice. That's it. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Exactly. And that's the thing I find you just sort of like you're constantly just just looking at yourself all the time. It's just a weird thing. And I think, you know, I think a lot of people do feel like that on Zoom. It's not the because when you when you're running an event, when you're running, you know, a training course or whatever, you know, and you're looking out at, at all the people, mm-hmm. you can't see yourself, can you? You're not looking at yourself, are, you know, you're just no, getting true. on with it and you just don't. But when you're on Zoom, you're just there and you see yourself all the time. And it's But do you not find I mean I'm not I'm not trying to cure you in, in the space of two minutes. Um but do you not find cure me. that yeah that uh you're looking into your webcam so you're not actually looking at yourself. So yeah you can see yourself probably in your peripheral vision when it's just like the two of us now. But when it's a big meeting, um uh, surely it's more difficult to pick yourself out, isn't it? Oh no. no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just more you're aware. On it, you know, it's Is like, that right? Oh, God, okay. you know? <laughs> all right, there's no hope for her. There's no hope for her at all. Listeners, watchers, however you are consuming this podcast, that's it. She's lost cause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not going to stop me, you know, doing stuff because I have to. Obviously, that that is what my business is all about, yeah. you know, and the kind of showing up on Zoom and showing up on Facebook Live and all those sorts of things. I will continue to do that, but it's not. It's just this. Um, you know, being confronted like with you with yourself yep. all the time, particularly when your hair just looks in a constant oh, mess. Oh, great! Here, just we go. At the Here we go. <laughs> it really doesn't. It really. And I think actually that length suits you. I do. Oh, I know. God. I know. You think it looks a complete mess and all the rest of it. And we have talked at length in previous podcast episodes and giggled a lot uh, about your hair. Um, and you know, getting hairbrushes stuck in it and, and that. <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> but it really doesn't look as awful as you imagine at all in fact it doesn't look awful at all that's not a word that i would use to describe okay. it. i think you look right. very smart and neat so there you go well you know i did that's because i washed it last night so <laughs> i did the um i did the uh the fringe um you know i, yep. I pushed it down the weekend just to see to, to you know giving it my that that lovely Highland cattle look again, you know, and it and it is literally like so it's about there at the moment, you know, <laughs> and it's just and what I'm trying to do is like and my hairdresser was going that way last time, last time I had it cut, to so you know to sort of sweep it to the side kind of thing, yeah. But she she also to do that she chops them out on the other side to give it and it's so it's in that and it's not quite long enough to. That, do I don't know to okay. do because you have to wait till it grows down there. Oh, and so I'm in that sort of in the middle as well. It's just <laughs> like so. If I put it to the side, it's not quite there. But then if I go down, I can't see, and it's like oh. <laughs> Trial. The alternative is to take the scissors to it, but I'm like you know I don't don't want to do that. I know. A mess. That that is. I mean, you know, if if your hair's as long as mine, so you know, I've got a fair amount of length on mine. It's a bit longer, but I've got a fair amount of length on the moment. You can kind of get away with it. Um, you know, I mean, it did could look neater but it looks okay at the moment but your fringe is something your fringe is, is one where if you get that wrong that's really obvious isn't oh, it? <laughs> but you're one of these lucky people whose hair just grows that way whereas mine grows that way yeah yours largely. just go straight out yeah. it's out you're outwards <laughs> it's like oh <laughs> anyway yeah. so you know and I'm like, i can't believe i'm in this situation yet again after mm-hmm. Of the torture I went through last year, the six months, and now I'm, I'm now a minute again. But you know, but hey ho, hey ho indeed, <laughs> hey ho indeed. It's these things we have to put up with, right? So apart from apart from all that, what else did you do last week? Well, last week, well, this weekend, and that that was one of the reasons that I wasn't at the, uh, at the well, the reason I wasn't at wine o'clock on Friday, was all about uh, the spiritual resilience uh, mastermind extravaganza. <laughs> Uh, because I call it extra because I've been on this um, this program since uh, June last year so it was nine months and this was the final weekend and uh, when the program was first set up uh, what we were going to do was meet face to face for this final you know this final extravaganza but of course we didn't so how they did it was to have three uh, meetings on uh, Friday Saturday and Sunday Mm -hmm. to sort of end the program and uh, I have to say, 
you know what a what a journey this this has been it's been a revelation because um how it started we talked about this didn't we nine months ago and uh if you were listening to the podcast then you you will have heard me talk about it but just to refresh your memory so for the last sort of two years or so so i've been doing stuff with michael neal and uh and if you don't know michael neal he's basically a coach and his uh, area of expertise is all about you know thought and thinking and getting you to think in a in a different way and um i really really got into it and it made an amazing difference to the way i was thinking and um and so you know i did oh a lovely little robin is just <laughs> It just <laughs> just landed up there, um, you know, and, and, and did, you know, all of his courses and mm-hmm. really got into it and everything. And then about a year ago, about 10, 10 months ago, so this thing popped up, mm-hmm. um, the Spiritual Resilience Mastermind yeah. that he was doing with, with Robert Holden. And I kind of knew of Robert, but I didn't have, you know, hadn't been yeah. on any of his courses for anything. And it was one of these things, it just popped up and I was like, I don't know why, but I've just got to do that. I have no idea what it is, but I just know that I have to do it. It was really weird. Um, and, and I remember, I think, remember I talked to you about it, didn't I? Going on the first session, which was, and I've got my little book here. Yeah. So uh, the first session that we had was the 6th of June. So the 6th of June was the first full day, um, sort of mastermind day that we had. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting there thinking, I have no idea what this what this is all about. And the first question they asked us was, um, "What did exploring what is spiritual resilience?" And I wrote down, "I know what resilience is, but I have no idea about the spiritual <laughs> bit. I didn't even know what it was, you know, because yeah, I, yeah. I, well, I always thought it was it was you know being religious, and you know, yeah, I've never yeah. been religious, and I was a bit worried that this thing would be a religious thing, and mm-hmm. I'm not really, um, but as it um, so." And I was literally going, well, what am I doing here? And I thought, no, okay, you just just stick with it and just sort of see mm-hmm. what develops. And uh, and it developed into, then I started, I read all Robert's books because he's written tons of books. I've read them all this year, about three times each. Um, <laughs> now I'm in his, 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 he does another thing called uh, A Course in Miracles, which is also this sort of spiritual Bible thing. Yeah. And um, so now I'm, I'm, I'm in this this. Uh, group that he's teaching throughout the year and I just think to myself what's happened to me (laughs) why am I but because it's just been incredibly it's just been a revelation it's just been something that you know when you just kind of open yourself up to something just completely different Mm -hmm. and instead of like making judgments about it you just you don't judge and you just go, I'm just going to sit with this and I'm literally just going to see where it takes me. Yeah. And it's just taken me to some amazing places. And, and I just, the, the difference it's made. In what, to in the what way respect? I, so give me, give me an example. Well, for it. it just, just, the, just the way, just the way I think, you know, again, it's just how just sort of being, you know, a lot calmer about things, yeah. just having that sort of, you know, appreciation for, despite what's going on for the you know for the good things in your in your life you know the the sort of positivity um the sort of you know <laughs> she says going on about her hair all the time but I was gonna <laughs> say <laughs> the sort of self-acceptance you know um <laughs> in, in the main. On Zoom. yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> in the main um and it, it's just I don't know it's it, yes of course you know we all have you know we have little flare-ups and things where you kind of you know lose your temper over and get exasperated and but in the main I yeah. would say that it's generally I have a, 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 a quite a different approach to yeah to life really and yeah. it's uh, it, it's just yeah absolutely yeah. but I accept you know being a more and also, it's again, it, it, it has really taught me to just and, and continues to teach me because I'm still on this journey. Yeah. Um, and I and I and I think now that this is it, I am going to be on this journey now for the for the rest of my life because mm-hmm. it, it's just really. And I've also met some really fascinating other people across the world, and yeah. and uh, you know, it's yeah, it's it's just been amazing, and it has been a lesson in 
if you just open yourself up to something completely new who knows where it's it's going to take you nice yeah absolutely it's that you suspension know. of disbelief isn't it so yeah I mean, I've, I've read a few things um uh, in the last year and one of the uh, one of these things said look you don't have to believe but you just have to suspend disbelieving yeah so you know you don't have to be fully gung-ho and, and yeah. all of a sudden um you know completely into this but just don't dismiss it just be open to it which is exactly what you're saying isn't it yes it's, you know just being open to that and i think that applies in so many different facets uh, and sort of you know bring, bringing it back to specifically business i think when we sit there and think oh i've got nothing to learn then that's kind of the death knell, mm -hmm. isn't it um, but being open to even if it's a subject and this is why i'm so pleased that we've got um people on the complete trainer who are by lots of people's standards successful in business yeah, yeah. Uh, and successful in what they're doing and, and real <clears throat> powerhouses for, for mm. what they do but they also recognize that you know every day's a learning day so to speak mm. but there's always something new to learn and if you eat if you can train yourself to not be well like i don't need to listen to that because i know i know what i need to know about that <laughs> thing you almost take yourself back to the beginning you take yourself back to this open uh learning state uh, yeah then uh, you never know what you're going to pick up and what sort of you know neurons that's going to fire in your brain and what connections it's going to make for you and, and yeah. how things will turn out so that's absolutely like an amazing experience it's, it's, you know totally i mean you couldn't you couldn't have expressed it in in a, in a better way there you know jeanette because there is i just learned so much you know and so much and I recognise, you know, and as well, there is just so much still to learn. And I've also felt, you know, really privileged because, you know, Michael and Robert are really acknowledged as, you know, the best teachers in 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 this particular business, you know, and it's and they are absolutely amazing in in the knowledge that um, that they have and and that they share. And it's just been it's just been it been incredible you know and now yeah. this as I say this next little journey I'm on now in this you know in this course in miracles thing it's like oh my god you know, like, <laughs> and this exercise to do every day and again it's like you don't really and they actually they do uh freely acknowledge that it's it is quite a difficult sort of mm. um you know text I mean it's massive I haven't even bought the book because they said actually there's probably no need to just just stick with the lessons every day and they'll explain stuff and just um just sit with it you don't have to understand everything mm. but just let it you know wash yeah. over you and, and then at some point it all slots in it all slots into place you know which is well, it's uh, like uh, meditation practices and yeah and that kind yeah of thing, that, isn't it? yeah that kind of thing yeah you don't have to you just let it all mm -hmm. just let it all you know uh slush about and uh <laughs> And then at some point, you know, it will yeah, all, it will all come sense. to understand it all. So, totally. yeah, so it's been, yeah, uh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. Wow. Yes, that was my weekend. Okay. Was my weekend. We'll have to start yeah. calling you Sharon Woo Woo Gaskin, won't we? Well, I'm definitely at the Woo Woo. I'm full on Woo Woo now. <laughs> wow. See, even a year ago. <laughs> I know that, you can't go off there. You're off screen. Oh, the sun is right in my flipping eyes. Well, it's like <laughs> move your webcam around, but you're half off screen there. I know. I know you don't want to watch yourself on Zoom, but you know. <laughs> There we go. There you go. There, there you we go. go. Sorry, YouTube people. But, you know, I will get her on camera and to stay on camera. I promise. All right. So what are we going to talk about this week then? Our top of mind topic. Oh, oh, before we do that, <laughs> yes. I just, yeah, I just must show you. Remember last week we were talking about the notebook? Oh, yes. And, uh, oh, yes, I got really excited because I thought I'm going to buy some new yeah. notebooks. I'm going to have a new podcast notebook. Yeah. So I bought, wait for it. <laughs> Where are they now? So, oh, there's amazing people on Amazon. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at this squirrel notebook. Excellent. Purple squirrel <laughs> notebook. You know? And, uh, and then I got this other lovely one. That was like, oh, that's Jesus. pretty. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I did all that and I got very excited because I thought that can be my podcast notebook. Very good. And then I found the other one. <laughs> now, at the moment, <laughs> anybody listening to this is, uh, rather than watching, uh, it's going to be oh, what's that sound? What's that sound that keeps you know like this on the on the? I'm oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
so, you to tell me. <laughs> if you remember, listeners and viewers, last week, we couldn't get Sharon's microphone to work. But we've, we've sorted it for this week, but it is much more sensitive than the other microphone. So before we started recording, I said, just be a bit careful about, you know, put your hands on your desk or slam in the desk or do an edit because it'll all come across on the microphone. So what's Sharon doing? Oh, yes, we'll go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make it sound all over the place. So sorry if you if your ears are blown out at all. But you know, we're just very excited about new notebooks. I've got a new notebook as well. So have you? Let's have a look I at know. yours then. Now I've shown you mine. <laughs> look at Oh that. my god, that looks like the Bible. <laughs> I know. And it's got uh, there it is my name on it. Wow. This was um a gift. Uh, I say a gift, it was uh, something that was sent to me as a, a sort of a, a welcome, let's get started thing for um, uh, the Master Persuasion. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, so when that, and it's leather as well. So of course- Very it's nice. Here. I mean, I know, you know, you're veggie and all the rest of it, but yeah. uh, for, for anybody that isn't offended by the smell of leather, <laughs> uh, it is gorgeous. Uh, so oh. uh, yeah, so I I, it's almost too pretty to write in you know what I mean yeah yeah oh I do know what you mean yeah Yeah. my squirrel one is too (laughs) do I have to yes you do got to use these things and no point being dust gatherers but yeah yeah so uh, so yeah all right any any other revelations before we move on to top of mind no that that was it yeah I'm done with with, I'm done with revelation (laughs) (laughs) oh my word (laughs) we will see where this journey goes all right Okay, so top of mind topic uh, this week. Do you want to introduce it or shall I? You uh, introduce it because you've already started talking about it, I believe, on your Facebook I in your have. Facebook group. Yes, yes. So uh, one of the things I'm doing in the Get That Gang uh, Facebook group is going in every weekday, uh, hopefully every weekday morning, but sometimes it might not be the morning depending on what I'm doing, and just doing a quick live two-minute tip video. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the whole idea is just really to give people something to stimulate their thinking if they're in the mood to, to watch something that's not very long and to just have something that can, as we were saying, swirl around, slosh around in your head uh, yeah. to just stimulate some thinking. And the one that I did this morning was actually one that I was supposed to do um, last week when Facebook went, uh, I can't do lives anymore. Um for whatever reason uh so i thought oh well i'll do it this morning instead and it was all about not worrying about getting everyone to like you or having everyone like Mm. you and what you do and what you put out there and all the rest of it and i guess the, the kind of the flip side to that is getting used to the fact that some people just won't want to work with you they won't mm. for whatever reason you won't be their cup of tea yeah uh, i guess is, is where we were going with this yeah. and yeah. it's sort of it was sparked by a couple of things one of which was somebody saying something along the lines of just think back to every single person that you have encountered throughout the course of your life whether that's business person or whatever you haven't liked every single person that's come across your path there will have been some people who you just took an instant dislike to. There will have been some people who you kind of, oh, they're all right, but, you know, I wouldn't choose to go and have a cup of tea with them or go and have a pint Mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, And then there are some people who thought, oh, yeah, they're really nice. And then you think, actually, no, I'm not quite sure about them. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there's a whole raft of people who have stayed with us, who have become friends, sometimes more than friends, you know, sometimes... Um, you know, these have developed into really strong friendships, yeah. but that doesn't yeah. happen with every single person you come across. Mm. So quite why when we go into business, we suddenly get this feeling that we have to have everybody like us and we have to have everybody appreciative of what <coughs> we do and all that kind of stuff, um, yeah. I think is is quite uh, a weird thing. Uh, but, yeah. you know, I hadn't really thought about it in that way. And certainly it's something that afflicted me in the beginning when I was thinking about putting out social media posts and that kind of thing, expressing any kind of opinion that might offend somebody mm. really took up far much, far more time than it should have done. Because mm. I was sort of, you know, trying to write things in a way that people wouldn't be able to take exception to. Uh, mm. And of course, that was then that uh, limiting belief was reinforced when I did rush to answer or rush to comment on something and somebody took it in a different way to the way I'd intended it. And it was like, oh, no, you see, I have to take time over these things and I have to make sure that, you know, I write yeah. in such a way that nobody can be offended. And actually, you tie yourself in knots and you spend far too long worrying about 
writing something that couldn't possibly offend anybody and yet people still get offended yeah, yeah so yeah, it's yeah. just a ridiculous thing to have that expectation that a everybody's going to like you and b everybody's going to going to subscribe to your point of view well, when you don't have that expectation of anybody else yes Does that makes sense yeah. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Sorry, I was a slightly Gender distracted there by Jen. She's having a, I don't know what she's dreaming about, but, you know. <laughs> it's something. It's something. She's having a mighty old twitching oh session there with her head on the cushion and <laughs> in her chair. She's always in her chair for the uh-huh. podcast, you know. You well, know. She you know, doesn't she... seem to be in the chair for any other time, but <laughs> well, she must know. Assuming Maybe she can hear She can hear your dulcet tones, you see. Ah! She's got yeah, so she has to interrupt, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she in. Oh, she's up to eyes. You see, she heard you then. She's up to eyes. <laughs> yeah, you and me, Jem. You and me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bless her. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, so. I think you're absolutely right. And I think really what you're talking about is, um, you know, is the N word again, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's the old niche because you can't, uh, you know, I've always believed that the right people will find their way to you. Yes. Um, you know, I don't know quite how it happens, but it, it, it certainly seems to, you know, it's, uh, and I think once you kind of recognize that, um, all of a sudden it, it feels a little bit more kind of doable because you're not trying to, you're not trying to reach everybody. You're not trying to talk to everybody. You're not trying to have everybody on your mailing list and subscribe to your stuff. You just you just want to have the people who you know you can help. Um, you know who are the people who are going to resonate with you, and uh, and you know your values and, and the way you see the world and the way you do business and uh, you know and and all of a sudden. Once you realise that, it, you can just kind of let go, can't you? It's actually quite it's quite free. liberating when you realise that. It so is. And th- this is why, for anybody that has ever spoken to me about niching, and I know I've mentioned it um, in the Complete Trainer Group and, and in Future Fit <laughs> last year as well, if you try and tell me that your niche is anyone who or everyone who, that is not a niche. It's yeah. not a niche because you yeah. cannot possibly create any kind of messaging for everyone or anyone. You've yeah. got to have a picture of your ideal client or your ideal customer or your ideal buyer, however you choose to describe them, so that when you're putting out any kind of messaging, whether it's an email, a social media post, a blog post, whatever it might be, imagine you are in conversation with that person. Mm-hmm. And if your niche supposedly includes anyone or everyone then you cannot imagine that person Mm -hmm. Uh, so you know it just makes life so much more difficult for you plus also you may not have recognized it but you will have this constant feeling of not being able to be yourself excuse me oh gosh yeah yeah yeah. so you know i mean i I took a decision a long time ago that uh, i was going my writing style uh, for anybody that's ever read anything that i've written or listened to to anything that i've spoken or watched me at all in any videos I like to think that my style is pretty similar across those three areas Mm -hmm. because I just cannot be bothered to not be me. Uh, It sounds crazy, but it's so much easier being me. It's so much easier writing the way I talk, Um, you know, obviously with a little bit more um, grammar and punctuation thrown in. But, you know, it's just so much easier to, to do that because... Um, you know, and, and here's the phrase that, again, I've used previously, your vibe attracts your tribe. And that's mm. why the right people come along, because it will be the people who go, actually, I like the way she puts things. I like the way she yeah. describes it. Um, I like yeah. the, the feeling that I get yeah. when I listen to, read or, or watch her. That's great. Those are the people I want to attract. You know, mm. and I'm not much fussed about trying to win over those people that go, actually, she's not for me. OK, yeah, fine. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to waste my time in that. Now, I would suggest that probably you more than me at this stage have had a few people within your network who you look back and think, what are you doing here? Because all Mm -hmm. they seem to want to do is moan. And uh, all they seem to want to do is is point out ways in which you're doing things incorrectly. Um, And you know exactly uh, what I'm talking about here. Yes, yes. If you tied yourself up in knots trying to win those people over, then you are neglecting the people who are going, hi, I really like you. I want to hear more of what you've got to say. 
Yeah. And, and yeah. that is why it's sort of, you know, it's one of those things where I think it's so important for us to obviously, yes, niche, but to have that clear picture of who it is mm-hmm. we're trying to talk to, who we would like to be in conversation with and what we would be comfortable saying to them and how we would be comfortable saying what we need to say to those people because mm. it just makes life easier and what it, are we after it's got to be easy it's easy got to be joyful i was just you took the words right out of my mouth there. <laughs> this, is all, this is all part of it you know it's all part of it because you know when you attract the right people to you um what you end up doing is then when you're working with those people they're just a joy to work with because really? they're they're so in tune with you and they kind of, you know, you're on their wavelength and they understand you and you understand them. And it's just, it's just a lot, a lot, lot easier. Um, and, uh, thinking about, about writing stuff. And, um, I often, when I'm writing my newsletter on a, on a Friday, uh, there's sort of little sort of personal blurb. I do, I do at the start of it and I'm constantly, I write something and I constantly literally, just sort of sit back and then go would you actually say that Sharon would you say that and I know you wouldn't say that so just write it as you would say it you know because it it, that it has to be has to be authentic because you've got to write as if it's actually coming out of your mouth you Mm -hmm. know it's uh, Mm -hmm. so uh, for sure and I think the the other thing to sort of throw into the mix here as well and part of the reason why I wanted to to bring it up not only in the two minute tip in the get that going this morning but also on the podcast was i was uh, i happened to catch up with uh, a youtube video from a guy called jeff walker uh, yeah. who is for anybody that doesn't know he's kind of the granddaddy of online launching uh you know he wrote the book launch uh, and yeah. uh, he runs a program called product launch formula and it's basically it's a blueprint to launching yeah. anything he's not the yeah. only launch strategist out there i've studied with others um uh, but he is kind of generally expe- accepted to be the guy that was there at the beginning um yeah. and he is in his video he was talking about how he is um uh, not rewriting his book but he's just bringing it up to date because it was first published in i think he said 2014 <clears throat> something like that um so yeah. it's, it's due for a review and all the rest of it and he's saying what he did was go on to uh, Amazon. He went into the, onto the dot com site, and he said he was just going to look through some of the reviews. And he said, you know, I'm very, very blessed. I've got more than fifteen hundred five star reviews, but those weren't the ones I was looking at. What I wanted to find were the ones that were less than five stars. And he said there seems to be this real extreme of five star or one star, and very little in between. Yeah. So he thought, well, I'll go and look at the one star ones to see what people are saying, to see if there's an easy win in there for me. Is there mm-hmm. something that I can fix easily in the yeah. next version of the book that, that will help? And yeah. he said what was extraordinary was that he could have five star reviews sitting almost side by side a one star review. And these people had clearly had such hugely different experiences with exactly the same book that yeah. there was almost no point in taking any notice of the one star reviews because yeah. he was saying there's this one uh, lady who he has since tracked down and will be doing a case study interview with who gave him a five star review for the book and basically said off the back of this book i have built an eight figure business um and eight figures is is 10 million plus a year yeah. right so it's in dollars yeah. it's, it's dot com <clears throat> um so uh, so not a british eight figure business <laughs> anyway you know, this woman has been yeah. able to be incredibly successful off the back of launch strategies that she got from the book. And virtually next door to that review was a one star review from somebody in one sentence just saying, don't know what all the hype is about. Complete load of rubbish. Didn't get anything from this. Zero stars. I was like, uh, OK, so yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. What is the point? And he, this is yeah. exactly what he was saying. Uh, you know, what is the point of trying to please the one star person? Yeah. I mean, apart from anything else, they hadn't offered any sort of serious critique or anything that he could use to improve the book. But clearly they'd had a completely different experience to the other person. Yeah. And who yeah. would he rather work with? Well, of course, he'd rather yeah. work with the person who's had a great absolutely. experience. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You don't need to go. I'm sure he didn't go off and rewrite his whole book. Not in the slightest. Because of that one person, no, you know. Right? <laughs> exactly exactly and yet we are drawn to the negative feedback we, oh of course we well, rough, as of trainers course. i think that that is a standard that's pretty standard you know that people will always you know um waste such a huge amount of energy on that one person on that one person 
who said something you know uh less than you know perfect about yeah. about your about Completely. your training course or whatever and you know why do we do that to ourselves I know. You know? maybe we need some more spiritual resilience eh? oh well i was just about to say you know <laughs> don't get yeah it got me started on that but, you know yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. i mean there, there isn't a single person in the world that is universally loved by everybody even dare i say it the amazing wonderful extraordinary sir david attenborough who is national treasure and all the rest of it yeah yeah, yeah. he's yeah. not university love university yeah. universally loved you know yeah. there, there are people <laughs> My mum was one of them. She said, oh, I can't listen to him anymore. He's so doom and gloom. I was like, well, there is a climate emergency, mum. Oh, yeah. well, he's still so doom and gloom. Okay, yeah, fine, whatever. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, you know, it, the, the point is this. You, you, you're you not the next David Attenborough. None of us, I, I would venture yeah. to suggest, are the next David Attenborough. And therefore, even achieving that national treasure status level, there are still people who don't like him. So yeah. why we are expecting any of us to be in a position where there are going to be, you know, everybody who comes across yeah, us yeah. and our work and our messaging, uh, we're going to be university loved. It's bonkers, <clears throat> you know, and, and you don't, you can, you can not subscribe to somebody's point of view and you can feel like their stuff isn't for you. You don't have to say it to their face. Just don't engage it's no, you know no, it's this is no. a completely different thing to to trolls on the internet it's nothing to do with that it's just accepting the fact that sometimes some people just aren't going to be or you're not going to be their cup of tea and they aren't going to be your cup of tea so let's go all right fine enough and we'll move on yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely right good stuff should we move on to the dog walking digest let let so I, I alluded to it a, a little bit already, uh, which was that Scamp loves the snow. But a new, a new thing for him this time around, which he hasn't done previously. He's only seen snow probably two or three times since I've had him. Um, but a new thing this time around was uh, I was talking about earlier was eating the snow, uh, which was <laughs> just really good. cheap, cheap dog food. <laughs> I know. And it was it was very very odd because he's never shown any inclination to do that before. He loves it when it's frosty. He really loves yeah. it when it's frosty. Um, and I knew he liked it in the snow. But it was just it was almost as if he'd been doing it all his life. But I have never seen him do it. It was just you know, run run run. Oh yeah, I'll eat that bit. Where did that come? Where? Why? How did you know to do? I mean, yeah, okay. Um, uh, obviously, it's frozen water. But at the same time, it's just kind of you know. Having oh. not seen him do that before, it's like, are you particularly hot? I mean, it's a quite a cold day, but anyway, <laughs> it was very odd, very odd indeed. But he loves it, so that's all right. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Well, we didn't, Gem didn't, we didn't have any eating snow incidents here, but uh, she did fall like she did slip on the ice a couple of times, which. <laughs> Poor Jim. <laughs> I know. She, as I was saying to you before, when we when we let her out into the into the back garden. So, if you can imagine, out the kitchen door, we've got like a sort of patio, yeah. and then and then we have steps down in, into the rest of the garden. And when you open the door, and um, that we have a, a table on, on the patio. When you open the door, so that actually always runs around the table twice, twice around the table, <laughs> and then goes down the steps. Yeah. So she did this yesterday. She ran twice around the table, and then down the steps. She got to the top of the steps, and there was a big patch of ice there, and she just Whoa. oh no, <laughs> like, on there, Jen. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Oh dear. And then ran back down, and apparently had had a little bit of a, a slipping incident this morning on a walk as well, but. Uh, but other than that, uh, she's fine and sitting in her in her chair, you know, dreaming of whatever she's dreaming about. Absolutely. Slipping on the ice, for well, Yeah, it could be. <laughs> it could be, couldn't it? It's odd, isn't it? And of course, you don't want her to, to have anything, any nasty accidents or anything like that. No, I don't want to have to take you to the vet or anything. You know, don't oh, want any of that. Thank you. Mm -mm, at the moment. Not at all. Not at all. Ah, well. Yeah. One thing I have noticed at the moment is there are an awful lot more people out walking their dogs than uh, would be normally. Um, yeah. Which, yeah. you know, I get, obviously, people have jobs and, and all that kind of thing. But uh, uh, what I've been trying to do, I think I mentioned this last week, uh, I've certainly talked about it previously, is I've been trying to do Scamp's long walk first thing in the morning uh, mm -hmm. because there's just too many people around. Um, I think I mentioned this to you off podcast last yeah, week. Yeah. Screaming yeah. kids. Screaming <laughs> kids everywhere. Now, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Children need to be children. There. 
<laughs> of course they do. Yes, in an enclosed environment away from me. Um, but <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. You were probably one of those really annoying people that I used to really get on my nerves when my children were having tantrums. Well, you know, uh, Ryan had had tantrums, of course, but you know, Amy did. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Of course, he did. Oh, but I could write a book on the incidents you know we had with uh, with Amy when she was little, and uh, you know, and it's stressful. <laughs> it's really stressful. Totally. And what you don't want is somebody like you <laughs> <laughs> cutting <laughs> and making you feel awful when you're so stressed trying to do with this child. All right, thank you very so, much. Let me defend <laughs> my honour here before you jump down my throat about something I haven't actually done. <laughs> Kids having tantrums in supermarkets, I have every sympathy for. My brother was like that when he was little, yeah. dreadful <laughs> child. Um, but this is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is kids playing, but screaming while they're playing, right? So as soon as they get into the park, all they want to do is run around, just, ah, like this. you don't need to do that. You can, you can play and you can have fun and all the rest of it without screaming constantly a tantrum is a totally different thing i have every sympathy for for parents where the child is inconsolable for whatever reason you know, <sighs> the, they, they want the sun to be red or something oh. which, you know you, there's nothing yeah. you can do about that but when you've got you know parents talking and this is this is particular to things like as well back in the days when we were allowed to sit in restaurants and that kind of thing Parents sitting in the corner, ignoring little Johnny and Sophie that are running around the restaurant, knocking into everybody's chair, going Aah! like this. And the parents are just like, oh, yeah, whatever. No, no, <laughs> you're in society now. You're in polite company. Control your kids. Because those same people would be exactly the same people that would say, control your dog. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, see? Rats over. Oh, see? Well. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I have a point. But even that, right, to bring it back to what we were talking about, there are going to be some people listening to this going, oh, I'm, I'm with Sharon, and then there are going to be other people listening to it. Oh, I'm, I'm with Jeanette on, on that one. Uh, but uh, I, I am uh, happily child-free, as you may have guessed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I've never had to. Well, actually, that's not quite true. Um, so I've, I've got um, uh, step nieces and nephews and yeah. quad children and, and yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, for some reason, Auntie Jeanette always managed to keep them in line. I don't know. Quite. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Probably, probably pulling, pulling on the lead and the collar that probably did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that bad. Anyway, oh. anything else for the dog walking guy? No, I was just thinking on that note, <laughs> I think it's uh, on that bombshell, I think it's time to say goodbye <laughs> for the week. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you as always, lovely listeners, lovely watchers, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, for your time <laughs> and patience uh, with what we've got to talk about. And we will see you again next week. Take care. Bye. Yeah, we certainly will. Bye. Have a good week. <laughs>